Point family. My name is Sasha Vincent Kramer and I greet you on behalf of our dear pastors Apostle Thomas H. Vincent and Dr. Curlin Vincent. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We hope you are ready to hear a great word from the Lord on tonight. So we're asking you to get your note taking materials and your notepads and your pens and let's get right into the word with our very own Elder Eric Good. Good evening and praise the Lord, saints. Uh, first, giving honor to God, uh, my pastors, uh, first family, elders, deacons, saints, friends, and you, my virtual family. And last but not least, uh, my friend who happens to be my wife, Sister Cheryl Good. God bless you. Uh, I am Elder Eric Good coming to you with our weekly Bible class. Uh, if you'll be so kind to share tonight's broadcast with uh, neighbor, family member, co-worker, or friend on your social media platform. We are virtually on YouTube at HCTTV. Uh, we also have a campus location located at 3269 Old Concord Road in the city of Smyrna, Georgia. Uh, we are north of the city of Atlanta, so if your visits uh, bring you to the city, uh, please come out. We'd love to, visit, to uh, have you visit with us, fellowship with us. Uh, we do have services on Sundays at 11 a.m. Amen. Tonight, we certainly don't take this privilege lightly, uh, for it is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in my eyes. Uh, if we could just look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight. Uh, we ask that you come in tonight and have your way. We give you glory, praise, and honor. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to lift our hands again in your presence and declare that there is no God like our God. Now, Lord, come in and dwell in the midst of us tonight. May the Spirit of God give us enlightenment and direction, revelation from the power of the Holy Spirit. Quicken our minds that we may be able to receive that which you have to deposit into us tonight. Now, Lord, wherever my voice is being heard on all social media platforms, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray that your name will be exalted everywhere. Receive the glory of God. Receive the praise that so richly and exclusively belongs unto you. Now, God, we thank you for being mighty and being great. I let every heart say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Um, tonight, our text will be coming from Psalms, the 85th chapter. That's going to be a foundational text. Uh, foundational text is found in Psalms, the 85th chapter. We're going to start at verse 6, and we're going to read down to verse 13. Verse 6 down to 13. So just to give a little pretext about the uh, scripture here, this is written during the time after the children of Israel were held captive for about 70 years. It wasn't the initial millions that were taken into captivity, but about 55,000 that returned. Uh, it was several contemporaries that led contingencies such as Zerubbabel, Ezra, Haggai, Zechariah, and later Nehemiah. They all led campaigns to return the people back to their promised land to rebuild and restore Jerusalem. And this book was written in that context. Starting at verse 6, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto all his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. 
mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. I like that scripture. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. My subject tonight, what the Lord had given me, is that the Lord is wanting to revive the church again. God is wanting to revive the church again. It's imperative that we understand that God is calling the church into revival. That word revival comes from a Hebrew word, sheya, which means to bring to life, to restore to consciousness, or to restore to a previous condition. It's at one minute or atonement, a heartfelt return to God and his commandments. You know, sometimes subconsciously as a child of God, we can be conditioned, getting caught up with the cares of this life, yielding to everyday activities and normal routines, and in some cases, turning a blind eye to the perpetuation of sin and its devastating effects going on all around us especially when you have groups of people calling wrong right and right wrong. Living in a society where groups of people wearing shirts and hats for shock value. I'd rather be a Russian than a Democrat, or I'd rather be an American than a Republican. The words impeach instead of preach on the minds of some Americans and some saints. We can sometimes be conditioned to see the actions of an individual who would rather divide a nation, a country, school, and church rather than heal and mend and comfort the brokenness we all encounter as the human race. That same numbing condition will allow us to experience firsthand a spirit that runs rampant in and out of people unchecked by trying to display its superiority over another culture or race of people where the color of one's skin tone seemingly has no boundaries for consideration or empathy. I believe if we could all take a step back, we could imagine how God must feel seeing that he sits high and looks low at the lives and the affairs of men and women alike. I could imagine that God shakes his head, sometimes in grief and disbelief, and wondering why I made man. My dear brother, Elder Eric High, reminded us earlier this month that God gets angry with us sometimes, especially when we're disobedient. I could imagine the thoughts of God when his heart was wrestling back during the days of Noah, where the Bible records in Genesis, the sixth chapter, that it repented the Lord that he made man on earth, for he was grieved in his heart because of the wickedness of man. Oh my goodness. We never want to be in a place where God says, I grieve, insert your name there, brother do good and sister all right, in my heart that I made you. Family, I must admit tonight that I, I, I find it strange. I, I struggle within myself. I've taken on a righteous indignation in this regard. That if you were to ask a reasonable, sane, and prudent person, in other words, someone with enough sense, 
They would agree in telling you that they would not eat or ingest anything in their body that would cause them fatal harm. If you were to ask any reasonable and sane mother of a child, she would share with you that she would not allow a sexual predator to roll up on her babies. If you were to ask a reasonable and just man, he would gladly confirm to you that he would not allow another man to disrespect his wife. Then how is it, how is it that we as Christians, saints and believers can see the enemy approaching from afar off and have no rebuttal, no rebuke, no attempt to stamp out or cancel out his assignment when he comes knocking at our door or at the doors of the babes in Christ. How is it that we can watch virtual services and candid conversations on Wednesdays and, and go to church on Sunday and slide right out without any challenges or changes of the promotion for the better good? How is it that we as the saints of the Most High God can allow our souls to be on a free course trajectory towards death and destruction without calling the true, the true and living God, the only one who can seek and to save those that were lost? I find it strange that we can give more credence to a football game than we can, than we do to the God of our salvation. I do find it difficult to believe that the only time we can raise our voice to optimal levels is during the playoff games or when my favorite team is playing their fierce rival. Family, God wants us to find ourselves in a posture of expectation and knowing that he is looking to present himself a glorious church, not having spot, wrinkle, or any such thing, but that his church shall be holy and without blemish. Apostle Peter was very specific and strategic and prolific in his writings to the church in 1 Peter the 4th chapter verse 17, 1 Peter 4 and 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Family here, hear me tonight. We don't want to be on that side of God's glory. We don't want to be on the receiving end of God's judgment and wrath found outside of the will of God. I don't know how you feel about it, but I made up in my mind as for me and my house, we have made our calling and election sure to meet God's face in peace. That's why the scripture teaches us to constantly examine ourselves, whether we be in the faith. In other words, we have to test and evaluate ourselves every day to see whether we are holding up to our measure of faith in Christ and showing the proper fruits of it. Tell somebody closest to you. Tell your neighbor, someone close nearby. God is wanting to revive us again. Isaiah, the 57th chapter, verses 14 and 15. We find in the book of Isaiah that the Lord is looking to comfort those with a contrite, lowly spirit. Isaiah, the 57th chapter, the children of Israel were held captive in exile for 70 years by the Babylonian nation. God instructed Isaiah to speak comfort to God's people returning to Jerusalem, but to also give warning and instruction to those who obey and disobey. 
Isaiah the 57th chapter verse 14 and shall say cast ye up cast ye up prepare the way take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people the B part of that scripture God is saying he wants to take the stumbling block out of the way of my people I would like to remind us tonight that the stumbling blocks are not necessarily from what you're doing wrong, but from everything that you're doing right. Therefore, it's not from the harvest of the good times, but it's from the tears and the worship and the praise that you offer to God that you have sown in the bad times through those sleepless nights. I see the Lord wanting to remove obstacles out of our way things that have been holding us back from our progress in moving forward I see the hand of the Lord holding back the hands of time for some and I see the hand of the Lord restoring the years for others in other words those that have thought that they were running back or running behind time those that have been running behind time because they've been doing things out of the order of their natural season of when they should have accomplished them when they were younger. I see the patience of God giving you time to accomplish your dreams and your goals. Dreams and your goals. Where are my seasoned graduates sitting there with your associates and your bachelors and your master's degrees where are you, those of you that have established businesses, being entrepreneurs, what, what some would say, past your pride? But I also see the Lord restoring the years that have been stolen by the hands of time. The years that the locusts and the canker worms have eaten. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say he's about to reverse, turn the clock back 15 years, back to 2008. I hear the Lord restoring your dreams and restoring your vision, restoring your ingenuity and your creative expression, bringing you back into focus. Your desires towards excellence, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a good place right here to praise God for having two hands. <laughs> One hand for holding back the hands of time for some and another the Lord restoring the years for others. We're still in Isaiah, the 57th chapter, verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. God is giving us a road map here and a richer understanding of both his heart and his mind. He's saying, although I am the almighty God, yes, I'm omnipotent and omnipresent and all powerful. He said, I can also be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. He said, I understand because I've been there. He will revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite ones. The Lord is saying in verse 16, I will not be angry forever. In the Amplified, he said, I will not be angry always. For if I did stay angry, the spirit of man would faint and be consumed before me. And my purpose in creating souls of men would be frustrated. Tell me that's not a loving, a caring, and a merciful God. Let the church say hallelujah. Therefore, God wants to be our everything. God wants to supply every need that we have for us not to go wanting. Isaiah the 26th chapter verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, conditioned, because he trusteth 
in thee. I thank God for having, <laughs> I thank God for having spiritual covering, a spiritual covering, having pastors who teach and preach the truth, the uncompromised word of God. And we have to be mindful in this day, especially the day and the age that we live in, where modern preaching today deals largely with the things God will give me. But very little preaching now deals with what God requires of me. The late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was quoted saying, life's most present, persistent, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? He went a little further in saying, everyone can be great because everyone can serve. What would it look like if we ask God, Lord, as much as you've done for me, what can I do that is pleasing in your eyes? What can I do that will enhance your kingdom, not only for today, but for years to come? What can I do for my home church to alleviate and lift the burdens off of my leaders? Tell you one thing we can do. We can get behind this mortgage debt elimination campaign, canceling the church mortgage on or before the end of this year. You know, sometimes within the body of Christ, there's a great deal of focus on acquiring the blessings of the Lord. Now, there's nothing wrong with us being blessed. God wants us to be blessed and to be a blessing. I believe that. But very little preaching is done now concerning the consequences of sin. I must announce to those under the sound of my voice that there are still consequences for disobeying God. The scripture says that the wages of sin is death. The Bible declares in Isaiah 59 2 that my sin separates me from my God. Now, before you go off and, and, and leave the church and, and where you say that God has blessed you and established both you and your family, before you want to hear a feel-good message on how to be wealthy, healthy, and wise, understand that God's word is preached with power and demonstration, not only here at 3269 Old Concord Road, High Point Christian Tabernacle, but in other churches across this nation where God has established his name, where it's nearly 24 hours a day, seven days a week, including prayer warriors that have been assigned by God to pray outside of the four walls of those buildings. So before you go off seeking what you think are greener pastures somewhere else because your Facebook, YouTube, or your ex, formerly known as Twitter, pastor said you should go off and start your own ministry or church I exhort you I admonish you I, I compel you to, to seek the face and the mind and the spirit of God before you make a hasty decision and go and destroy not only your life but the life of others from the inside out I say to that seek godly counsel Tell your neighbor, God is wanting to revive us again. Jesus said that if any man be my disciple, he must, what? Take up his cross, then he must do what? Deny himself, and then he what? Must follow me daily. I hear the Spirit of the Lord wishing to remind us of the state of the church of Ephesus. The state the church of Ephesus was in, starting in Revelation, the second chapter, verse 2. The Bible says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and hast borne and hast patience 
and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore whence thou art fallen and repent and do the works or my, 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 hear me church. Jesus is giving each of us ample opportunity to not miss out on the manifestation and the move of God. Hear me by the Holy Ghost. There is coming another time of another wave of astonishment and amazement of God's wrath and judgment poured out on the world and especially these United States. Now, I'm not a preacher of doom and gloom, but God wants to make us sure. He wants to ensure and make sure that our houses, our spiritual houses are in order. I want to caution us tonight. We are preachers that are teachers and evangelists of the gospel to brace for the next wave that will hit the United States. I want everyone to know that you will be verbally or even physically persecuted for standing up for what is right and holy. You will have people who will want to muzzle your mouth for speaking the truth against evil and wrongdoing. There are some anti-religious groups that are forming alliances within various communities against the written apostolic truths of God. I believe there's a day coming within the next five years should the Lord delay his coming that will challenge the doctrinal truth being spoken in the pulpits where God declare a specific sin and abomination. There will be a spirit that will want to challenge that in a court and the judicial system, justifying or characterizing under the umbrella of civil liberties, saying you are coming against or violating a person's civil rights. But be of good cheer. Understand this is not nothing new. This is not a new line of thinking. Paul admonished Timothy that many will be taken away by false doctrine and they will love the false prophets by loving and supporting them. Many are saying today that there is no rapture. There are many who are pre and post millenniums saying that we are already living in the great tribulation. Many are saying that there will be no rapture or resurrection of the dead. And there's some even saying that there's a purgatory, that purgatory is real. Purgatory is a belief system that once you've died in your sin, your sins will be forgiven and you can spend eternity with God. Somebody say, not so. The devil is a liar. So then, this is the time for the saints of the Most High God to check your relationship and right standing with God. Verify to see if you have what it takes to ensure your calling and election is sure. Confirm with God if your ways are pleasing in his holy sight. This is the time to ask God when he finds something in me not if, when he finds, to take it out. Tell your neighbor, God wants to revive us again. So we don't have no need to be fearful and perplexed in our thinking and in our stance on God. Because God has promised us that he will never leave us or forsake us. God promised that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. He promised that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. 
But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. We have to take heed that no man or woman deceive you. Therefore, I come to announce and stand tonight to let God be true and every man a liar. Jesus will come again. I believe the Lord is speaking to someone tonight that are on the verge of their breakthrough and equally close on giving up, throwing in the towel because they lay in torment in a valley of decisions. But understand, beloved, that this is a trap from the adversary saying and trying to take you off the scene. It's no wonder why Satan has been on your heels these past two and a half and three years. It's no wonder why he has been, been trying to slip you up with distractions, racking your body with pain and, and sickness, constantly having you fearful and anxiety constantly on your mind. Always keep this before you. The enemy, the adversary, the devil has something you have that he no longer has access to. That is the love of God, the favor of God, and eternity with our Lord and Savior. I'm reminded in John the 15th chapter, verse 20, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Peter describes it in this way, 1 Peter the 4th chapter, verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice. But brother good, how, how can I rejoice when the walls all around me are closing in? How can I rejoice when my jealous supervisor is going to HR behind my back trying to fire me? How can I rejoice? How am I going to make these two ends meet by the beginning of October? But my Bible says, Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Pain <laughs> is not strange to a child of God. Disappointment is not strange. It's not a strange thing to a child of God. They that live godly shall suffer persecution. Understand, you're not in it by yourself. Remember who's in it with you. God is in it with you. In the book of Daniel, the third chapter, and whenever you have your private time, you can read that whole chapter in its entirety. But I think we may be familiar with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was this fiery furnace that was heated up seven times hotter than a traditional heated oven. Here you have these three Hebrew, Hebrew boys that were thrown into the oven at the order of King Nebuchadnezzar. Bible says that the men that threw them in, they were the ones consumed with fire. Can you figure that out? They throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, but they get consumed. The king stood up and asked the question, wasn't it three men tied up and thrown into the furnace? And the response came back, yes, yes, we did. The king's reply, well, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed and the fourth looks like a god <laughs> you can't tell me god cannot remove your enemies and make your feet like hind's feet treading on heights above your circumstances making you the head and not the tail above only and not beneath you can't tell me god can't reverse the order of the day the season or the time the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. God can set up ambushment against your enemies. 
on both sides of you and cause them to turn inward against themselves. <laughs> Believe the scripture. Go ask Jehoshaphat over in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. I guess he would share with you. He said, there was ambushment that was set up against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, caused confusion to come between the two opposing forces, causing them to destroy one another. And just in case you didn't know that Judah in scripture, it means praise. Praise. I believe someone owes God a praise on tonight for what God has done for you from where God has brought you out, what God is continually to do for you and your household. Oh my God, where God is trying to take you in this season for the situations and circumstances that should have killed you, wiped you off the face of this earth. But God set up ambushment against your enemies to go another way and for them to die and for you to live. So, the more you give earnest heed to your salvation, the more you give earnest heed to your relationship with God, the closer you will get to the glory of God. But I hear in 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, after ye have suffered a while, God will make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. God wants to revive us again. God bless you, and I love you, and may heaven smile upon you, and may the remainder of this year be the best year. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Elder Good, for that awesome word of God on this evening. We hope that you all enjoyed the word on tonight. Now we're asking that you get ready to give. How many know it's a blessing to give unto the Lord? Amen. If you're giving online, you can visit our website at www.highpointlive.org. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and hit the donation tab. If you're giving by mail, you can send your tithes and your offerings to High Point Christian Tabernacle, P.O. Box 813-699, Smyrna, Georgia 30081. We also want to invite you out to our Sunday services that start at 11 a.m. And I'm telling you, you don't wanna miss a service. God has been moving at High Point like never before, amen. So thank you for joining us on tonight, High Point. We love you and we hope to see you on this Sunday. Now stay tuned for our announcements and remember those who are on the prayer list. God bless you. We love you. These are your upcoming events and announcements. Please listen carefully as we announce our October calendar. On October 6th, we will be having Friday Ignite service. And on October 7th, we will be coming together for Face Down Prayer, that Saturday at 10 a.m. Immediately following Face Down Prayer, we will be having Minister's Meeting with Dr. Apostle Thomas H. Vinson at 11 a.m. We want you to save the date for our Leadership Summit. Moving ahead with direction and purpose. It's taking place on October 20th through the 21st. This two-day training will involve all who serve in some capacity as a personal leader, in the home, leader in a work group, church, auxiliary, or a community role. This is being sponsored by Elders Jimmy and Deborah White. For more information, you can email highpointcollege at gmail.com.